G'day everyone, welcome back to Life on the Hulls. There's another uh, abuse session on my body. This one's been brutal. I've just spent the last eight hours tabbing, filleting, and uh, completing and peel plying the sole of the port side of my catamaran. It's been a bit of a monster. I've been on my knees, on my hips, you name it. It's just part and parcel of this, uh, this whole build. But I have to say, so happy that this floor is down. It's solid. There's no more bilges apart from the engine base for me to fall into. So I'm pretty bloody happy about that. This week, I'm gonna be uh, making the road face for my stern starboard cabin. And, uh, and basically starting to piece that room together and just getting a really good feel for how this is gonna be outlined and a couple of explanations as to how I intend to finish the robes uh, when it comes time in the, in the uh, hopefully not too distant future, but it's gonna be quite a while before I complete that side of the boat. I'm over here on a port side completing a lot of work over here now and really moving forward. So right now having these modules in and out, in and out, I've basically completed this and now this soles down on forging ahead. So thanks for joining me. Don't forget the Composite Shop channel. There's uh, seven episodes up there live on YouTube right now, ready for you to watch on my Composite Surf Kite build. There's a lot of little hints and tips there on how to finish and how to, uh, how to prepare and finish uh, fiberglass products as you make them. Um, you know, who knows, you might get into making something for yourself. So thanks for joining me and uh, let's get into it. When I did the, um, the wardrobe, partition up in the forward starboard compartment there, up in the front suite. I use composite angle to hold these shells in place and uh, as, I was, as I was glassing them and all the extra work that that created for me, I came to the conclusion that I didn't even need to do that. Now, as a result, I've got beautiful, strong shells up there. They're only gonna ever carry t-shirts and maybe towels and the like, uh, maybe a pair of shoes if I'm lucky. Um, I've realized that I can use a hot glue gun for exactly the same effect. In fact, on this particular bulkhead, I could just put a, a screw through into the foam, sit it in place, make sure it's all level, and do the filleting and tabbing and not have the composite angle. And that's what I'm gonna do on these cabinets from now on. It's all a matter of access, but I think hot glue is the go. I'll put these shells in with hot glue, just put a couple of tacks, hold it in place, fill it, tab it, it's done. It's not like it's gonna be load bearing. And to be honest, I still get the similar strength, uh, but, uh, and without all of the mucking around that I had with those composite angles, I think I'll save my angle for more important regions of the boat. Oh, I spared you the tabbing of that, uh, wardrobe there because Jesus there's only so much of it you can watch isn't it? it's like bloody painting a picket fence it's just endless two layers of uh, tabbing all over and then peel plying and then I'll probably have to go back give it a sand and give it another layer so it's been a pretty arduous task and in fact I've been laying down on the ground tabbing in those fillets but it's all done now so at least I can get the peel ply on it now and get it finished getting very used to being jammed down in small places, that's for sure. <laughs> it's just part of boat building, guys. Occasionally you need to add uh, large amounts of foam together and actually you can butt join them. You can actually uh, uh, mitre them together. I find that just by butt joining them, you know, really it's got no strength in it anyway until you put the laminating or the bridging laminate which actually forms that bridge or that eye beam structure. So I find just simple hot glue. Now in this case, I have to add this piece which is actually the base of my bedside table in the uh, starboard uh, rear stern cabin uh, to the, the wardrobe. So one piece wasn't wide enough. Now why they don't make sheets of this 1.2 meters wide is beyond me. It's always like 1.1 or one meter. It's just so you buy more. But, uh, but ultimately for me to join these together, I can simply butt join them put a little bit of hot glue, just a couple of little spots, just to hold it in place. So I'm ensuring that I've got a good flat substrate to work on. And then I'll put some weight on it, let that go off for five minutes, and then I can laminate straight over the top, thereby adjoining 
the entire structure together uh, with the laminate on the top and then I'll rotate it over and do the back side as well. Now in this case, this particular component here, which is this part here, I've taken a template here, it's actually going to be a face of, uh, of foam, but I'm then going to laminate some gel coat onto one layer of 300 CSM, and then I'll simply stick that veneer onto the face of the wardrobe, cut out the doors, and then the doors, the actual the foam here that is part of the door will in fact form the inside of the door. But now I don't want too heavy a lay up on this. I was actually just gonna lay a layer of 300 CSM on it, and then I thought about it. I'm gonna use this 98 gram Aerolite. Now this is what we would typically put two layers of this on a surfboard. Now if it's strong enough for a surfboard, I'm sure it's strong enough for a robe partition or a face of a robe. Um, this is actually like a, a very light woven roving and if I put two layers of this on here, it's gonna be as stiff as a surfboard and then ultimately I'll be able to put my gel coat face on there once I lay that up, similarly with possibly with even Aerolite on the back or a tie layer of like two 200 CSM chop strand matting. Um, very importantly, that the foam that I've decided to cut out of here for the doors is going to form the face of my robes. So that'll actually be the doors. It'll be a, uh, a foam cutout, will in fact be the door once it's faced as well with a timber veneer or something to that effect. So that probably should take about 10 minutes. It takes me about 45 minutes to do a panel of that size, but I've done it really meticulously because I don't want to have to come back and uh, and sand and ferret. Next morning, I've just come in. That's basically uh, all set up. I need to do the other side now. The one thing that I cannot believe is how light it is. If you just put two layers of 98 gram cloth, all I'm using this for is a face of a robe, and uh, two layers of that 98 gram cloth on both sides, you've got an ultra light, very, very strong panel that certainly will suffice as a cosmetic. I don't know whether I'd use it as a structural member, but certainly as a face on a wardrobe, Perfect. So I'm going to get this one done and turn it over and basically give it a bit of a clean up and get straight into it. Now, because I've laid that up on flat plastic, there's been quite a bit of resin soaked through there. I'll just show you what it's like here. So all these little pinholes or perforations in the foam have absolutely uh, filled with resin. So that's giving all these like little spikes or rivets holding the actual face to the substrate. Um, there is a couple of little bits of uh, raised resin here. I need to sand that off before I laminate the next bit, but I'm gonna get straight onto that. So I've given it a good sand. There's a couple of little raised parts where the resin has come up through the, uh, the perforations in it, and it raises a little raised lump. And you don't want that when you're trying to laminate because you're only gonna end up with an air bubble. It's gonna create like a tent where the, the cloth can't lay down over that spike. So you must sand those little edges off and um, the only way to avoid that is really to put it down on a vac table and, uh, and I'm not going to do that just for one sheet. So for those of you that have uh, commented on my poor choice of copyright free music from YouTube and uh, and the fact that I, I talk too much, well, I've got a social experiment here and uh, and I'm going to basically give you a couple of minutes of uh, audio free composite laminating ASMR. This is a new trend on youtube and uh it's uh it's taken youtube by storm and i hope you enjoy this some time without me talking and just soaking up the sounds of laminating hope you enjoy it and uh who knows i may even bring out a full 25 minutes of asmr
just been up on the hull and gave it a re-measure and I remembered that I had to allow an extra centimetre in width here because what I did originally is I had the bulkhead come out and one part of the face of the robe actually intersect with the uh, with the bulkhead and then the other side, this bedside table side actually intersect with it rather than now it's all one piece. So I've had to add one more centimetre to the width of the actual uh, the, uh, the door face that I'm going to put in there. What I'm intending to do is to cut out the wardrobes now that it's all laminated. I actually cut the wardrobe doors out, decide on the size of those and decide on the bedside table cutouts as well. And I'll put those those parts aside so that I can use them for the uh, fabrication of the doors later on, whether I go for a wood veneer or a gel coat finish is a matter of discussion with, uh, with the boss with the uh, higher authority in the boat building field and that is uh, Janet. But anyway, we'll see how we go here. I'm gonna basically get rid of this template now. I can take it, put it away, and uh, and I'm gonna take this outside and give it a good cut and take it up and give it a dry fit. One thing that never ceases to amaze me is how light this stuff is. Um, if this was a piece of plywood and uh, you know a layer of 600 double bias or 400 double bias on each side, you know you wouldn't struggle to lift it, but it wouldn't be as light as that. I mean that that whole panel would be probably about four kilos. The one thing that is striking, however is how many boats out there are actually made of just a layer of foam like that with one layer of double bias on the on each side that blows my mind to think that i'm out there sailing around on a boat that's uh that's that light um, but having said that i mean the rigidity of this is quite incredible whether it has impact protection or not is a matter of conjecture and that's one of the reasons why i've used it just for the wardrobe face. I didn't want an intersecting bulkhead into the side or a, uh, a road partition into the side of the boat forming structure to be this lightweight. So I have actually beefed all of those up to 600 double bias on a layer of 300. So they're really quite strong. That's just the road partitions. All the bulkheads are actually uh, double that layup in fact. And all of my lower bulkheads in uh, up underneath the floor, which is you know any area that's going to impact is probably underneath or maybe along the hull side. So they're certainly a lot thicker than your average kit boat. Now, is that going to detract from performance of the boat? Absolutely. I'm adding weight, but I'm also removing weight in areas where I can, such as this here. I mean, that as a robe face is lighter than the, the fiberglass module that I've actually laid up there, and probably just as strong. And to be honest, it's only a robe face anyway. Anyway, so at the end of the day, uh, cut out the weight where you can, add it where you have to, to get the strength and the resilience of the boat. I want this thing to last for, you know, for eternity, or at least my eternity anyway, and it will last at least that long, you know. So throughout the build, I haven't made a lot of mistakes. I've made a couple of small ones, but nothing really that uh, has possibly had a massive impact on both time and money wastage. But right here I have, this is the rear starboard queen size bunk. And this here is the bedside table and the wardrobe, obviously. Um, when I was, uh, pretty overexcited. I got him to cut this bulkhead along here across the front of the engine bay. And it was already probably that much higher and I cut it off. I've used it for something else, that piece of foam. Now that I've come to this point, I knew this was coming. I now need to put a piece in here. And I simply need to fill the gap between the bulkhead and the bedside table. Just like that, it's done. So I've cut that to the template side. It's basically going to put in a couple of these little cleats on the side here and uh, you know, no wasted foam. And now I've got a basically a perfect joint here. So 
pretty easy. The great thing about this foam is, is if this was, uh, you know, MDF or something, you wouldn't butt join it. You just put another piece in it because this stuff is so expensive. Use every little scrap. And that piece there, I'm going to run a fillet along the bottom here, fillet along there, and another one up the side there, and that's going to go straight in place. So I'm going to do that straight away. And uh, sit it in there. And then I'll laminate both sides, join it up strong, good as new. It's actually stronger probably than the original. So what I'm going to do now is I'll run a tape across here and fill it in and tab it all the way down and then it'll probably be stronger than it probably ever was but, uh, or ever would have been. But anyway, at the end of the day, it's the same thickness, it's the same layup. Uh, all I need to do is bolster that up. Now, next thing is to work out the wardrobe height here and I'm going to remove this panel and I'm going to cut out these wardrobes and uh, and get the basically the insert is going to form part of the foam core doors. So I'm just determining the center line of the wardrobe here. At halfway point is uh, 305 mils. So I've just drawn a center line and then I'm going to determine the wardrobe size. Now the issue I've got is out here. This is actually the outside of the deck. It comes in so you can see that that wall is going to be cut off in there uh, when I get the deck in there about where that black line is roughly so that means in here there's no point in me putting a wardrobe up to the top here because it simply doesn't exist it needs to be reasonably low but it also needs to be accessible now I've got a shelf at about this height here in there so I need to be able to access that shelf and still make it serviceable so I'm going to make this door uh, around about this height here and take it down to within about um, oh, probably about 15 or 150 mil off the floor so that it serves as a bit of a storage in the bottom there which is pretty narrow storage anyway you can see it over here in the bedside table how how small it is down in there once you get below there it's even smaller but uh, the other thing is i've got another shelf down there remembering that i didn't put the shelf all the way out so i'd have more significant storage down in the bottom and access for any sort of lines and i'm obviously going to have drains and possibly through holes down in there that i need to be able to get to for the bilge pumps and uh and for possibly the freezer discharge and, and all these other things that i'm looking at putting into this area here so you know try to think it all out i'm going to do the same here i'll determine the center line here and then i'm going to work out i'm going to have one drawer here that's going to slide out and then i'll have it below that will be a door there's one shelf there again access down in the bottom i will make this door here the same size or the same height as this door here and then remembering this is going to be one gel coat face over the whole thing with hopefully wood veneer doors now i may do gel coat veneer doors i'm not sure yet haven't quite decided i certainly am not going to paint them i'm more inclined to uh to veneer them than to uh, than to paint Right, I'm trying to cut out my wardrobes. I'm going to cut these out and that will form the foam core of my wood veneered cupboard door. So I've got to be very careful how I cut them. I'm going to have to plunge them in and then trim them later on, maybe with an oscillating tool or even a fret saw or something. So I'll get into it and do it. And, uh Okay, so I have now uh, physically cut, a bit like one of those CNC kit boats. I've cut all of the foam core here, and you can see the uh, see where I've cut it here. 
and I've left these little tabs here and I can cut that with my oscillating tool and, and get a very, very neat finish. But with that uh, track saw is one of the best things that I've ever owned. I mean, honestly, if you have the opportunity to buy a track saw and I bought the Craig system, which is actually a track that just any saw can fit. And I love that because that means if my saw blows up, I just buy another one, something that'll fit the Craig system. Whereas a lot of the other ones, you actually actually have to have the saw to match the, the, uh, the track saw. But you know, it was a little bit more expensive, but really worthwhile for having that versatility for a number of different uh, saws. What a life changer. I mean, no more clamping of, uh, of straight edges and things. It's just simple. You just put it on and cut it. But by being able to do that, I now have my doors. Now these doors, uh, last episode, or a couple of episodes ago, I had a couple of comments about what I'm gonna do. A lot of guys don't like the idea of having all white faces throughout the boat. Neither do I. I do want wood accents, but for the cleanability of a boat, you can't beat white gel coat. It's nice and simple. It's easy to repair if you chip it. You don't have to paint the whole surface again. You can simply repair it, polish it out, and you can continue to polish the inside of the boat until it comes time to then either reapply flow coat or uh, paint it. But for me, for the lifetime that I expect to get out of this boat, I can't see myself replacing any of the gel coat surfaces in here. I might be able to do some chips and things like that. But what I'm going to do is these foam panels are likely to have a wooden veneer on them. But what I'm not going to do, I'm not gonna just stick wood onto the entire foam piece. This door here is likely to have a solid timber frame around it and then the foam inserted into that and then the veneer vacuumed onto the outside of that. I'm planning to vac the veneers on. If there's a better way, I'll do that, but I have a vac system, so I may as well use it with a vacuum bag. And that, that would be my plan, is to have good rigid foam, lightweight doors with a 1.6 millimeter thick uh, Queensland walnut or something like that on the outside so that I get that wood look, but the benefits of foam core and a weight and I won't have any cardboard or hollow core door or anything or nylon core or whatever, uh, still foam and continuing the mode all the way through the boat. But for now, I'm gonna put this back in place and I'm gonna trim these out and put these doors in a safe place uh, up in the factory there so they're out of the way so that when it comes time to do the doors, they're ready to go.